All right, much smoother break, start, all that good stuff. All right, welcome in, everybody. It's a new stream. I said I was going to paint. Um, I'm going to digitally paint here. This is a program called Procreate. Um, let's just, I taped this up. It's not a good spot for it. But let's see. The great thing about this is that working digitally is that you can make changes all around. So uh, this is just, uh, why is this not working? Hmm. Let's check the power on the battery. It's not liking it. I was just working a second ago. Hmm. I wonder if the tape is affecting it. Let's see. Because there was enough juice on the... It's had the here, let me just, um, yeah, it's giving me, it's 59% should be working. Oh, there we go. All right. Um, let's see. Nice thing about this program, just like Photoshop, you can create layers. So let's go ahead and start something as a warm up. I'm going to start with uh, a light blue and um, get a brush here that is. Mm, go with that. Oh, it's probably a little, a lot of trial and error with this. So let's do. Let's just try, what should we do? Should I do a face, a head, an arm, a hand, a foot? Uh, arms perhaps, arms, let's, let's try an arm. All right, let's do, uh, Tricep, bicep, I don't know, <laughs> tricep. That's a shoulder. Here's a tricep. And a little crossover lateral thing. Uh, forearm, fist, a um, couple other smaller fingers. Okay. Um, ribs in there, chest. Belt, cape, neck, chin. Um, sure. All right. Um, so we're going to say this is uh, Superman. Um, let's go ahead and apply some color in a broader, lighter sense. Nice thing about working digitally is you can just kind of get all over it. Um, let's go ahead and drop in a light. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Color theory. Let's try a warmer color. Well, smaller. What happens if I don't like that? What if I go back? Nah, let's go with a grayer color. And uh, put a little depth there. Light source coming this way, of course. And it's on multiply. Um, 
So the more I go over it, the darker it gets. And um, let's do like a little rose color. See what happens if I do that. Just kind of. I can't say that there's much planning in this. I do know that uh, when you put warm and cool colors next to each other, good things are supposed to happen. I should have done the blue last. I could have done a complete gray value in just... Uh, I can still do that. So let's go ahead and select some white. There we go. And... Um, Pop some highlights in there. Not too many though. It's already too many, but I'll get rid of some of those. And get something approximating black. Drop it in. Probably would be good to have photo reference so that you could um, get the values just right. Could still do that, I guess, but let's see how far I can get without using it. It's just really about getting values down. I'm not going to worry so much about colors, values. Well, I'm going to worry about hot and cold. So hot, this was uh, when I was younger, I was completely mystified when they were hot and cold. It's the way I understand it, it's just blue and red. Cold has blue, more blue in it. If it's warmer, it has more red tones in it. Right, so the pink here. Then once I have these colors down, I, I basically pick off of what I've already chosen. Or applied. So. Let's see. We still are defined this. So once I have the darkest values here set up, I'll use hopefully just the colors I have here to start uh, rendering, making these. Uh, Muscle shapes more 3D. But the goal at the end is not to have lines, right? It's a painting, so I got to think about every th a line exists at the intersection of two different values, two different colors. Right there, I'll move it over. Dips plunge. Can't even see the drawing because of chat. So there, I moved it over. Hopefully that helps. All right. Looks very purpley. That's the correct art term, I believe, purpley. The brush a little bit bigger. 
again, the capes over here. No, it's going to do a cast shadow of the arm. Not a good idea. And then, so I've got the darkest tones. I'm going to go ahead and establish the mid-tones a little bit. Bring that transparency down a little, a little bit more. I want. I need something in between. There we go. No. Base tones in the middle here. Hmm. Yeah. So what's nice about here, if you look, you got uh, white, aqua, some, some, you got a bunch of different colors going on there. So that's your palette. So let's clean up some of these like blue lines up right at the bottom here. So I'm just thinking about this sort of shoulder shape. It's kind of a heart. So, let's start thinking about it that way. Maybe a little more of a little more blue in there. This background over here, would just, it's always nice to use red as it, well, no, red's no good. Got red on the cape, blue. Let's try light gold. So what happens if we do that? So these are the larger building blocks. larger muscle shapes. And it doesn't even really matter what color they are. It's more about values. So if you were to turn this to a black and white image, um, it should feel three-dimensional, I guess. I'm trying to get rid of all the line work at this point, the under, what I had underneath.
Okay. Um, let me uh, take care of some notices. Quick draw 13 has cheered. Thank you very much. Uh, if you need tricep reference, just look up at the screen. Thank you very much. Trevor Kai has cheered as well. Um, that Naka Jojo has resub. Thank you very much. Kanger Banger has resub. Um, thanks for popping in. Bloodhaven, Bloodhaven Knight has resub for a while. Been resubbing for a while, 22 months. Rodinell, uh, Toxic, I believe. Um, Twin One Two. Unexplained Soup, Golf Boy Sunday, Spiky Summer, MF Friel, I've already said, um, and Z Money, Z Money, Swag Dog, and Crispy Egg Roll, and E1 Winkle have all subbed using Prime or the Twitch subscription services. Uh, Pandemus has cheered as well. You get a paper-like screen protector. Uh, protector makes it more feel like more paper. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah, I probably should. Um, original sketch has resub. Mr. Mikey Lee, Grimes Jr. All right, awesome. So you can still see some of the blue lines here. I'm not going to worry about too much in that, just like a sketch, I like a little bit of the underdrawing to show, just trying to get rid of as much of it as possible, I guess. And this one, uh, I describe as sort of like creating the islands. If you um, ever look at like Google Map or any map of the world, you uh, you'll see the dark blue of the ocean, and then the lighter blue of the shore, and then the beach. So think of this as the dark ocean, the shore. Here's the ground that actually comes up, and at the peak is the mountain, right? So it's a topographical thing. So the white represents the top of that um, formation, darker land. Why can I not speak today? Angry Panda 888. I was just flying yesterday and it was a long ass flight. Left at uh, one, in the, one in the afternoon, landed in California. Got home like 9 p.m., 10 p.m., something like that. So what is that? That was about uh, twelve hours of travel. Rocket teats. Um, not my happy birthday, but thanks in advance. Okay, so at the end, I am going to create. So each of these islands, there's like a double island there. Each of those islands represented topographically. Here, I'll, I'll, do, I'll explain what I was doing here. We go to the deep ocean. Deep ocean. Here's the deep ocean. And uh, as we get closer to the shore, it turns that color.
It's got a little jungle on it. Too, too purple. Does that make sense? All right. So <laughs> that little island, each of these uh, muscles is protruding off of, out of these dark seas. What am I saying? So take this notion, transfer it over here. All right, so if this represents the darkest part, we'll go very light. Maybe make the brush a little bit bigger. So in this configuration, the muscle shapes are roughly like this, like an offset heart. All right, one, two, three, the bicep, that was horrible, the tricep, one. I think there's another one back here. The elbow pops over here. There's this muscle that crosses over here, and out of that muscle comes a couple other muscles that come down to here. All right? So we're trying to get to the island that is this. Oops. There we go. So it's just layer upon layer. Calzor has a uh, resub. Can't wait to get the Hex ba Artist backpack. Yeah, you know, in the photo, it does look big because it is big because it holds a 11 by 17 uh, portfolio. So that was the idea. It's not a backpack you would take to the mall walking around. It's a travel backpack. It's like when you are going from your hometown to another con to set up at a convention or you're traveling and you want to take your art supplies with you. But it's nice when you're flying, you get everything you need, like right then and there. And there's enough slots and pouches that it's actually easy to take stuff out and put it back in very quickly and security. But I would go pre TSA every day, and you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Take it, you know, take your, depending on the airport, but and the country. I usually don't take anything out. And the interesting thing is, like, after a shadow, like, the part that's often shiniest is, like, right behind the darkest part. 
You'll see that like noses a lot. If there's a nose, an upper lip like that. Like the shadow of the nose will be here. And then the widest areas, and you can look at photographs, are like right along that edge. All right. So when you're painting, you just have to look for those relationships between shadows and, and highlights. You know, I was going to put um, some time and update some of the emotes that we have. Created a bunch early on and then didn't put as much energy into it. I don't know if you guys had any suggestions, I'll write it down because I always, during the streams, I go, oh, that would be a funny emote if we had that. And then later when I actually sit down and think about creating these things, I realize um, I've blanked. If the um, if the mods could uh, try to capture some of the better ones ideas, I all the ones except for superhero swimmer art, um, <laughs> we'll replay it later or share it with me later through Discord, and uh, see what I can do. All right. Someone asked me like what character I, I was gonna make this Superman. So painting like on canvas, I find that you're just going back and forth over the same lines to find the edge. Right? Sometimes that means going with the negative and then the positive, the negative, positive, et cetera, et cetera. like doing stuff where uh, it's very low opacity and just kind of going in subtly, uh, bringing down the saturation of colors. So you can see the yellow is the most saturated along the very edge. Just a little more of a painterly effect, I guess. And there's gray, blue gray over everything I've just done. I don't like it, so. Now, popping these highlights on every single muscle mass um, makes the thing look very shiny, but also makes it look very uniformly lit and bulbous, steroided out. Um, 
So I like to think of where I want the eye to go. Let's say it's going to be up here. And kind of knock these down. All right, you still see them, but they're not as they're not as hot as these white ones up here. All right? So now the eye, the sh the focus of this is moving more up here. I can even go darker in here. That makes sense. Okay. All right, let's see um, what happens. when I start putting um, some color over this. This to be as dark as possible. X. All right, and then let's reduce that opacity and just work these islands back up a little bit. Okay, now let's get a little Superman blue in there. And we're gonna switch the brush to something that's just flatter. And let's do a, diff that's a different layer. Hit multiply, let's see what happens. Oops, that's not what we want to have. A bit larger. And what this does is it per preserves the um, the values of established and the underdrawing, right? It's kind of lay lays it on top. And um, it's going to grab this yellow here. Um, Need to create another layer. Just one more, and then that's not what I wanted to do. And then it's red over yellow, right? Always have to think about that.
kind of like the idea of it being the reddest up here. And then down here, it's going to just get darker. Same thing here. Okay with it, just getting kind of darker in here. Um, let's see, who do we have here? We've got our mods. So crispy egg roll, hoop kid, Karihiko here. I will say it's harder doing digital and keeping up with chat. Hello, Beliasa. Uh, Kate is at a family event. Joe Willis Art, greetings from St. Louis. Spenji G is here. Trevor Kai. Jake Drake 4 has subbed. Darth, Darth Laurie has cheered. Love seeing your work on alternative mediums and going outside your comfort zone. Cheered 100 bits. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of suggestion of a face. It's a little odd. It's very uh, Kirihiko like to just kind of have like a soulless face, no eyes, nothing. <laughs> so let's just put a suggestion of a head here. Uh, that be the nose, upper lip. The jowl. And get that flesh color back in there. Then use the outside color to draw with negative space. Maybe a little red. Lips and nose. Right now we have a suggestion of a, an actual face you can see. If one were to Zoom in, you can go in and add a lot of detail that will not look great when you pull back out. It's too fine, but I'll show you what I mean. There's the nose. Nostril. Edge of nostril, upper lip. Lower lip. A shadow that goes right here. It's very dark, I think. There, that's what it looks like more on my screen there. And then out of the um, colors, I can add a little bit of blue. Too much, let's bring that down. Too much, bring that down. Still too much. Yeah, there we go. See that blue kind of 
the under light of this blue under the chin. Maybe into that shadow there a little bit. Catching that upper lip, that light bouncing off here, bouncing up there. Maybe even on the underside of the nostrils. I get this dirty flesh color over here. Kind of round out that chin a little bit more. And again, I was talking about the shadow, right? If the shadow of the nose falls there, I'm going to drop some blue in there. Okay, that means of this flesh, and we're going to go and lighten it up right there. Let's bring that lightness right at the edge of that shadow. This is the shadow of the nose. This is the upper lip. It's the chin underneath the lower lip. Here's the top part of the nostril. This is the uh, edge of the cheek there. And let's just uh, go ahead and define the edge of the face a little bit more. Actually, it's kind of a greenish hue on the screen. It's more yellow on mine. All right. So that's what I've got right there. But you see how, um, what I was talking about, like here it looks good, the values, but when you get small, the darkest values actually become a line, which is what you don't want. You want it to be values and less, less lines. So let's, so that's why I don't want to work too kind of zoomed in because you're going to be painting for something that when you look at it, actual kind of viewing distance doesn't work. And I've done that. Whenever I've drawn digitally or corrected something digitally, go, oh, I can zoom in and really add every little hair or feature and then you zoom back out and it doesn't look right. The scale of it's wrong for the size of um, what you're trying to achieve. So you have to think about the scale. As well. Um, now so we have that I can go and get white. White is the most powerful color you've got so you got to use it sparingly Huh, it's white on my screen, it looks blue. Definitely a bluish tint to everything. Let me see if I turn this. I'll post it on Insta. I'll do a time elapsed kind of thing. So I don't know if, nah, I don't want it to be on the edge. The tendency for a lot of new painters or colorists, all right, a digression, all right, so in traditional black and white four color comics, there's no way to paint. Um, you can layer colors over each other, but there's no way to create three dimensional form using values or 
well, you can actually, you can, so you can drop in the shadows, but you can't really create lighting effects. So what happens is people will draw a, um, an arm like this. Yeah, let me do this on a separate layer so I don't have to hit undo. All right, so if this were a traditional black and white drawing, you would define all the shadows, and this is a core shadow. They would drop in They would drop in blue local color, the color of the actual fabric, on one side. And then they would have uh, like a color, like let's say, rim lighting, kind of represented by another color like that. And that would create the illusion, I guess, if you can kind of squint and see this, but you'd have to essentially create a core shadow and then rim lighting and then, but that rim light would have a black line around the outside of it. So in painting, uh, you don't have to do that. So it's about um, the rim light not being on the edge over here. So a lot of people when they color for the first time want to put the highlights on the edge. What you can do, I guess, um, but that's kind of learned from looking at comic book art. For the most part, it's going to be here. Like I was talking about those topographical sort of maps. And depending on how fine you want to get with it, you can render this so that's really smooth and exact, or you can do it so that you see the pencil lines kind of like brush stroke, sorry, that I've got. which I do prefer, actually, to be honest. It's a very subtle render that I'm doing. So again, the brightest blues are going to be up here and less down here. And we have a darker red. Yeah, 
And you actually can put, for example, like red underlining. You can't really see it. So I won't do it right now. All right, so that's kind of what I have right now. Let me turn it so that it's, oops. See it in the screen. Okay. All right, now the final thing I'm going to do is um, add some white highlights here. Again, the, the brightest ones are going to be there. I will have a couple down here. All right. Now the thing with uh, Superman's costume, if we did like the movie version, is that uh, there's like that subtle stippling on it. So I'm going to do some of that just because it will look cool. So let me pick out the right brush. Go back to a round brush. Go fairly small. Too big. I think you guys can see that. It might be easier if I do it like that. Uh, it's it's little it looks like little scribbly lines, which they are, when you get it really close. Um, but the idea is that when you zoom back out, it looks like kind of shimmering textures that are in the blue.
this is where it's kind of a abstract, like it's a mix of drawing and painting here, which I kind of like to introduce. Purists will go like, well, you're drawing now, you're not painting, whatever. Find out what works for you, dude. And then you get the whitest parts here. Too much. Go down the opacity here. much too bright and the brightest highlights are going to be up there and with the red on the cape rather than going white just go with a lighter red You know, I'm going to do this. Let's try this here. Is that better? Chris A has subbed. Moonlight Mac has subbed as well. Tigiti, thank you for all your work. Unity Mind has hosted. Thank you very much. Programmer Art has resubbed. Double Western. KB Bradshaw has cheered. How do you prevent yourself from over-rendering a face? Um, just stop earlier than you think. But yeah, over-rendering is bad. But thank you for the cheer. Kanger Banger has cheered. Thank you very much, Kanger Banger. Tim Baksh has also cheered. Um, Jake Drake 4 has sub using Prime, Soul TV as well. All right. So let's zoom in a little bit. You can kind of see where I'm at. Do we need chat and stream? Good question. Should I take it off for what I'm doing?
Thank you, Charlie Parks. Thanks for the support. All you guys that have, um, that have, uh, funded the Kickstarter, we hit the 250 milestone. So. Right now and later, thank you very much for the, for the cheer. Appreciate it. Um, it's getting a little bright in here. Let me turn that. Actually, that one kind of need it for viewing this. Let's see what happens if I do that. All right. Now get that lovely reflection. All right. Um, yeah. You don't have to worry about putting like other colors and there's like blue now in the red down here. That's I think the fun of painting is that you can kind of start applying as long as it's the right value. So theoretically you can put um, colors anywhere, right? So I put some red in, and now I'm going to basically grab the neighboring color and kind of fade out that red so it's very subtle. Let's see if that works. Might have been a horrible mistake, but... Now I'm going to put a little bit of a fine edge to it, like kind of rim lighting over here, just to pop out. 
chest and arm from the rest of the uh, body. I like this red that's in here. I'm going to see if I can find it and then bring it up a little bit. Yikes, wrong color. I'm not even convinced about this yellow. It's just a good kind of opposite color or contrasty color to this pose. I don't know what he's doing. Feel like he's celebrating Batman's birthday or something. I don't know what he's doing.
Let's see what happens. Just the color of rough. And uh, let's see, I think, what do we want? They have burns, but shouldn't there be a dodge? Oh, here we go, lighten, perfect. Color dodge is what I'm looking for. Let's see what happens if I do this. Do this correctly. Mm -hmm. Too much. Uh, no. I like it up here and there, but not in the blue. Okay. Oh, am I still? Oh, that's a race. What did I get in there? That's kind of cool. 
Uh, let me see what I do with that. Let's go a little bit bigger, a little, a little smaller. Too big. Smaller. a painting so you could suggest things rather than be literally uh, well on the screen it looks completely black <laughs> on my screen you can see subtleties take my word for it anyway I was just messing around All us Batman fans know this is just a fever dream. Superman fans that this would possibly even be. You know, I was just going to leave a cartoony thing, but now I think I, I feel like I can actually go here. Uh, Giovanni Sanguili has resubbed. I bought this Superman Hush statue and it's amazing. Thank you for supporting Hush. Queen City Amusements has cheered. Cloud Strife has resubbed. Thank you. Grand Admiral Bertus has resubbed. Hi, Jim. We didn't think we get to watch today. My wife is due with our firstborn today, but it seems content where he is. We were content spending a Sunday afternoon watching you work. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Congrats on the uh, upcoming birth of your first child. That's pretty cool. Chaotic23 has subbed. Danny Dank Jims has subbed. Sterben XXL has resubbed as well. Anonymous gifted a sub to Angus McBeef and Duck Helmet. Michael Demurgis, Bergwen, Calcitis. Uh, as Hefra has hosted four viewers. Thank you very much. 
Trevor Kai, excited for his bags. He's cheered 100. I uh, really want them before San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah, I think they're trying to. I'm not sure exactly um, how that's all going to roll out. But yeah, it'd be cool to see a um, bunch of people all wearing or sporting the same sort of backpack. Would have been helpful if I had Superman actually kind of looking down. Put a little gray in here. Let's do this multiply later. The full value of the shadows that we've only wasted our time. Too. Now, if one were doing an actual um, painting of this, you see the benefit of doing a rough using a digital device. Feeling aggressive today. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Big chunky. Yikes. How was I? Let me frame this up just right. Kind of where I'm at. The 
notes over here. I don't know. <laughs> that seems good. Let's see what happens if I close out. Let's go back in there. And let's see what a time lapse video looks like. Uh, Rusk double zero has subbed. Eddie Biederman has resubbed. Thank you for your support. Past two months. Right now and later, cheer before. Thank you very much for the cheer. Appreciate it. See you later, quick draw. Invariably, there's a, a section earlier in all this where um, it looks better. <laughs> Shofu... Mm. Shofu Kamachi. Hey, how you doing? Jerry Mail Joe's got to go to Costco with the wife. I'll rewatch it later. See you guys. See ya. This time lapse. Is it doing it in real time? I hope it's speeding it up. No, it's speeding it up. The time lapse somewhere. I'll, I'll post the, one of the time lapses on uh, Instagram through Instagram TV because it's going to be longer. It's running two and a half minutes right now. It's still not, it's almost done. It's got about a fifth left. This part goes fast. That almost looks animated. <laughs> <laughs> Dark turn is correct, yes. It's got to hurt. <laughs> KB Bradshaw, why do you always have Superman kill Batman in your picks? Because there's so many Batman stands, you know? I'm one of them, of course. 
And Superman, he can fly through the center of a sun. Can't beat Batman. Okay. Hey, Kirihiko. Got our mod prime in the house. Okay, that's done. So that's better up to three and a half minutes. All right. Um, what you can't see. Can you see? It's kind of, it, the camera doesn't do it justice, but in on my screen, there's a luminescence here to the red, which it's hard to see, but uh, it looks pretty cool, I think. That's kind of the fun part of working digitally. As you can see, um, there's a lot more variations than what you're seeing on the on the screen. And the screen is very blue and white and black. But there's a lot of uh, stuff going on. But anyway, like I said, I'll post it later. All right. Let me properly crop this. of the audio -ish. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, um, I want to thank our mods, uh, Kirihiko and Crispy Egg Roll and Poop Kid for uh, being here today. Roman Trofort. Am I coming to France anytime soon? Uh, unfortunately not. So my next shows, um, obviously San Diego Comic-Con in about two weeks. And then after that is um, uh, after that will be Fan Expo Toronto. And then um, New York Comic-Con and then Baltimore Comic-Con. All right, so uh, please thank the mods on my behalf, if you could. Oh, there's this weird light thing going on over here. Oh, no, it's from this. Anyway, I do have a Cintiq fiddlesticks. I thought I would just try this because you can actually see my hand moving on the screen and operating the menu and stuff like that. And it's a lot easier to set up than um, on my Cintiq. That's right over there. Um... Name of the pen. This is the Apple Pencil. It comes with the iPad Pro. This is the iPad Pro 12-inch model, I believe. And we're going to go raid someone else. But before that, I could take a couple questions. I'm a little... Um, not tired. But uh, I did just travel yesterday. I got home in the evening from Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, where I went for uh, Dan DiDio's wedding. He got married this uh, July 4th. I missed out on, on the crazy um, earthquakes here in California. So I, I'm not, I don't have any of the anxiety that some people seem to be carrying with them. And it's funny, I lived in the Bay Area in the um, when did I live there? I lived there in the well, I'm getting <laughs> my mind is drawing blank. I lived there uh, I moved out of the Bay Area right before the big earthquake that happened during the World Series. I was on a plane leaving San Francisco um to go sign some prints uh, in Toronto. And I remember the uh, pilot coming on the radio while I was kind of half asleep at night saying there was a huge earthquake in San Francisco and the Bay Bridge had fallen into the, to the water. So in my sort of hazy dream addled mind, I, I envisioned the whole thing collapsing, but it was just like a small portion. But still, I keep uh, missing out on, the, on big quakes, uh, so I'm very thankful for that. All right, so here we're going to go.
But anyway, yeah, so I had that trip, which was awesome, but, um, you know, traveling does take uh, something out of you. And But I did want to stream because next weekend I most likely will not be streaming. Um, Got to go do something with the family. But I will update you all on the Discord channel. And uh, uh, if you guys don't know what the Discord channel is, the mods will direct you there. It's basically a companion piece, I guess, to this Twitch stream, which is, you know, live streaming. YouTube has the recorded streams. VZA on YouTube has the edited streams. Um, and Discord's really where people kind of share, you know, their plans and talk about the stream. And um, it's a pretty cool community, actually about 4,000 people that are into comic art and pop culture. So I recommend checking it out. And uh, we're going to go raid a friend of mine. This guy is super talented. He is a working pro. Um, I'm happy to see that he's on Twitch streaming. It's uh, Stefan Sajak. He did uh, some amazing Aquaman covers. He's doing a painted project for us. Um, yeah, so please check that out. We're going to go uh, raid in a couple seconds. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. Um, and again, thank the mods. And um, I'll see you guys soon. All right. Take care. I'll see you at uh, Stefan's uh, stream.